In the aftermath of the Battle of Midway, the Imperial Japanese Navy found itself at a crossroads. The mighty aircraft carrier force that had been winning the war was gone, their string of successes broken. And while they still had aircraft carriers, the number of ships was sharply reduced. As a direct result, multiple shipbuilding projects were cancelled or otherwise reworked. No more super battleships or super cruisers. Instead, they focused on anything, and I do mean anything, that could be made to carry planes. One ship that fell victim to this change in priority was the heavy cruiser Ibuki. While not immediately chosen for conversion, by mid-1943, she was slated to complete as a light carrier. However, in common with Vesser in Germany, this would never be completed. Instead, Ibuki would get very close to completion as an aircraft carrier, before being left to rot as the war drew to a close. An unfortunate fate, to be sure, although not an unexpected one. To get to that point, however, I will first cover where Ibuki began. I'll start with a disclaimer. As is the case with many Japanese ships, especially incomplete ones, there is not a lot of hard, factual information. Records were often destroyed, either in bombings or intentionally at the end of the war. A lot of Ibuki's details are going to be a bit fuzzy as a result. In fact, basically everything about Ibuki, that's been written in English anyway, comes from one source. Japanese cruisers of the Pacific War. This isn't inherently a bad thing, because this is an excellent source, but I generally prefer having at least two reliable sources. Bearing that in mind, the Ibuki class was functionally an improved version of the Mogami class. The heavy cruiser refit, that is, not the initial light cruiser design. So a lot of what applied to Mogami will apply to Ibuki, with some relatively minor changes. In fact, had Ibuki been completed, she would have looked more or less like another Mogami. Although it is probably more accurate to compare her to Suzuya and Kumano in specific terms. The Japanese even called her a modified Suzuya type. Regardless, the biggest difference in design was one that isn't immediately visible, and that was swapping the triple torpedo tubes of Mogami for quadruple torpedo tubes. These would have been in exactly the same position and layout, so it isn't an obvious change. Beyond that, the changes only get smaller. Ibuki would have had improved rangefinders, fire control, and radar, by virtue of being a mid-1940s design, instead of a mid-1930s design. Her whole form was slightly different, being about a meter shorter than Mogami, but with the same beam as Suzuya and Kumano and her main mast was further aft than on the Mogami's. Ibuki's armor protection was, again, only slightly changed from the older ships. It was still the same 3.9 inches, or 100 millimeters, over the machinery spaces, with an increase to 5.5 inches, or 140 millimeters, over the magazines, with some minor improvements in overall coverage and over the steering gear. The last major change, then, was the main battery turrets. These were intended to be a modified version of those fitted to the Tones, which makes sense as that was a more modern turret than those on Mogami. With the changes out of the way then, I'll go ahead and give a brief rundown of what her original design would have carried. Ibuki, as designed, would have displaced about 15,000 tons at her full load. Her standard loading, around 12,000 tons, is right in line with the Mogami class after all their refits. As could be expected, for a ship that was largely a repeat of the second pair of Mogamis. On that displacement, Ibuki carried the same 10 20 centimeter or 8 inch guns, in the same layout as well. Three twin turrets forward, and two twin turrets aft. The forward turrets were mounted in a distinctive arrangement, with the third turret superfiring over the first two. The aft pair, by contrast, was a bog-standard super-firing pair of turrets. Her secondary battery, in its intended form, consisted of four twin 12.7cm, or 5-inch, guns, backed up by a handful of 25mm guns and some machine guns. This would have been changed to a lot of 25mm guns had she been completed. 
Rounding her weaponry off are Ibuki's improved quadruple torpedo launchers. These were mounted in the upper hull, with two on either side of the ship, one pair beneath the scout aircraft, and the other pair chest aft of the funnel. The power plant would have, again, been broadly similar, if not identical, to Mogami. 152,000 shaft horsepower, in theory, through four shafts, for a design speed of 35 knots. This is all on par with the heavy cruiser refit to Mogami. However, as Ibuki never ran trials, and certainly not in her original design, it's impossible to say exactly what speed she would have managed. That wraps up the technical details, although there is one more note to make here there was a proposal to change up Ibuki's torpedo battery. Her scout plane facilities would be removed, along with the original torpedo tubes. In their place, she would carry five quintuple torpedo tubes, the same kind carried by the destroyer Shimikaze, presumably with four of them in place of the original quadruple tubes in the hull, while the fifth was on the center line where the aircraft used to be. Regardless of how serious this proposal really was, it didn't go anywhere, just as Ibuki, as a heavy cruiser, ended up going nowhere. Laid down on April 24th, 1942, Ibuki was barely into her construction when the Battle of Midway happened. Unsurprisingly, construction came to a grinding halt. Japan was frantically trying to replace their losses and giving a good long look at what they were building. Ibuki was lucky, in a way, in that her construction restarted in short order albeit only to get her launched to clear her slipway. This launching would come on May 21st, 1943, at which point construction was halted yet again. The Japanese still weren't entirely sure what to do with her at that point in time. Clearly, they had already figured out that she wasn't going to be completed as a cruiser. However, what they would do with her was still something of an open question, to the point that things like converting her to a high-speed oiler were considered. In the end, though, the Japanese decided to take a page out of the American playbook. Ibuki would, like several American light cruisers, be converted to a light aircraft carrier. This was by no means a weird thing for Japan. They had already built seaplane tenders, the Chitose class, with the explicit intention of turning them into aircraft carriers. And then there were Junyo and Hiyo, very successful conversions of ocean liners. Ibuki would not join them. Her conversion, which was fairly extensive, was never completed. I will still briefly cover what she would have ended up as, however. First off, half of her power plant, shafts and all, was stripped out. The remaining boilers had their exhaust trunked into a typically Japanese funnel. A single funnel on the starboard side, facing down instead of up. With only half of her original power plant, roughly 72,000 shaft horsepower, Ibuki was left with a 29-knot top speed on two screws. This isn't as weird a choice as it might seem. The design used the freed-up space for aviation fuel, fuel for the ship, and bomb and torpedo storage. This would have increased Ibuki's combat range, along with giving her the means to support her air wing. To further support this, Ibuki ended up with a full-length flight deck. This was 205 meters, about 670 feet, long. This is not a small flight deck by any means. The island's superstructure, compared to the flight deck, was actually quite small. As for her defensive weaponry, the carrier was designed to carry two twin 8cm, 3-inch dual-purpose gun mounts, 16 triple 25mm gun mounts, for whatever good those did, a total of 48 barrels in all and four 28-tube rocket launchers, which might actually have been less effective use of tonnage than the 25mm guns, which would be saying something. Those weapons were, of course, only for self-defense. As an aircraft carrier, Ibuki's main offensive punch came from her aircraft. The light carrier was designed to carry 27 aircraft, 15 Mitsubishi A7M fighters, and a dozen Aichi B7A bombers. A tad optimistic for late war Japan, but it was the plan at any rate. I doubt the Japanese would have been able to find enough planes or properly trained pilots by the time Ibuki could be completed, but that's another issue entirely. 
In any case, the point is a bit redundant. The Japanese, once more, halted construction on Ibuki in March 1945, which was, ironically enough, her intended completion date. By that point, with basically no aircraft or carriers to their name, the IJN more or less gave up on her. Scarce resources were put into defending the home islands, not finishing a ship that wouldn't even have planes or pilots. It's rather telling that small submarines were considered a better use of steel and other such things. So it was that Ibuki would languish in harbor until Japan surrendered in late 1945. At that point, sitting at about 80% completion, Ibuki was towed back to dock and scrapped in November of 1946. She never carried planes, she never fired her guns in anger. It's an unfortunate story if you're fond of Japanese warships, but it is not surprising. Ibuki, the incomplete aircraft carrier, was scrapped by August of 1947. That said, as I round off the video, Ibuki had one sister ship that got as far as being laid down. Some sources will claim four ships total, but I haven't seen hard evidence of the last two ever being ordered. As for the second ship, hull number 301, she was laid down on June 1st, 1942, just a couple days before Midway. As could be expected, she was quickly cancelled. The little work done on number 301 was scrapped within the month to clear her slipway for the aircraft carrier Amagi. Some sources online will give her the name Ikoma, but this seems to be a post-war invention. Even Ibuki didn't get her name, until April of 1943. Regardless, that does bring us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.